Hey everyone, Sean Allison here yet again. Uh, another Cozumel video I'm revamping here again from 2016. This was Tormentos Reef. This is a pretty shallow reef. This is maybe 20 to 30 feet deep. Uh, just off the beach, very, very sandy. Uh, but we're going to do the full dive here. Again, I'll kind of fast forward through some of the slower stuff that's going on. But uh, So here's gearing up. We're stepping off the boat. Local dive leader he kind of pushes you off the boat. Make sure you don't catch that tank on the way down. So we jump off. You can see the bottom pretty clear already. You see the shoreline there. We're not very far off the shoreline. Uh, so we all jumped off the boat. Again, we're with a group of people. I'm not leading this trip as a dive leader. This was a fun trip, just me and my daughter. Uh, but we were with a group of other divers uh, from our local dive shop. Uh, so we swam over to where everybody was at. We're starting our descent. Uh, we do have one local guide kind of leading us here that we're going to follow on this dive. Uh, again, Cozumel is the drift diving capital of the world. There's pretty strong currents blasting through here all the time. That's why you see me holding on to her D-ring as we descend. Just trying to keep her with me. You see all the other people kind of getting blown in the current, kicking against it, and still losing ground. Um, so at this point, we're all just making our descent. I'm telling her get neutral, so we're adding some air to our jacket to uh, stop the descent so we stop sinking. Everybody's kind of corralling up. Here comes the local dive guides. This guy down here at the bottom uh, coming toward us right here. Uh, that's the local dive guide. He's waiting for everybody to get down, get neutral, and be situated. Uh, he's about to, to start setting up the dive here. Now you can see the current is flowing from left to right here. Uh, once you get down in between these curl heads, uh, you know, it'll cut down on that current a little bit. But it's usually blasting pretty steady no matter where you're at. Uh, but clearly we're going to be drifting to the right. We're not going to be swimming into the current. We would run out of air really quickly if we were going to try to do that. So I see the, the, the guy going to the front. He's setting up his drift. Um, I can see which direction we're drifting. So uh, we're kind of swimming over to the left just a little bit. Get out away from this reef. So I, I'm trying to set up our drift. So as we drift past it. We, we're going to drift right next to the coral and kind of take a look at any of the stuff that might be in there. So already you can see all the barrel sponges, all the smaller fish down there. There's going to be a bunch of tangs and uh, there's chromis and all, all kinds of stuff on this dive. I'll point some of it out. But there, there's just tons of little damsels and, and stuff like that. that uh, They're really too small for the camera to pick up. You probably won't see them uh, too much in this video other than some little black things swimming around. All right, so again, this is pretty open bottom. It's mostly sand with a few very large coral heads. Uh, and they're not, they're not very close together. Uh, they're kind of separated out. So it's a little bit different than some of the other dives you do in Cozumel. Uh, again, there's some of the other group. We're trying to work our way around the group here. We're drifting into people. People are just kind of lingering. I'm not sure why. So I'm just, again, I'm here for fun, not to lead the trip. They're, those people aren't really my problem, so I'm kind of just trying to get up front and, and uh, look at things with my daughter here. So we're getting up to this first area. It's mostly just a sandy hill with some coral and stuff on it. I'm pointing out a little honeycomb trunk fish. It's kind of small. It's hard to see here. Get a little closer. Uh, a lot of trunk fish down there. Really cool looking fish. A little triangular body. They're flat on the bottom, but the top, it, you know, if you looked at them front from the front, looked at them in the face, their body shape would be like a triangle. Very unique body shape on this fish. Real cool looking though. Again, you see the groups kind of set up behind us here. We're kind of in the front now. Uh, we're not too far from the, the local dive leader. And just kind of taking our time. I'm looking ahead to see where we're drifting. Uh, I'm trying to make sure and set us up. Uh, in a good position for our drift. That's kind of what I'm doing here. Is I pointed out here to this thing on the ground. There's not something there we really want to look at. I'm just trying to move us out so as we drift we don't do get blown right into this coral head. Like I just indicated, we can kind of go past it and kind of hook around uh, hook around it without, without going right over the top of it. The reason I'd rather go beside it than over the top of it is uh, that gives me an opportunity with a large coral head like this to actually look underneath the coral head see because there's going to be a lot of a lot of times there's going to be big fish or whatever morays anything like that will be hiding up under these coral heads 
So Heather's kind of posing here. I'll take a still frame. That's just so I can get still frames out of my video. Do a little wave there. Pretty pretty good sized coral hit there. Water temperatures down here are usually in the 80s. I didn't uh, I didn't look in my dive log to uh, see what the temperature was, but I believe you know Cozumel is usually at, probably at the coldest. It'll be in the upper 70s. It's usually pretty pretty temperate, uh, pretty temperate, uh, pretty mild temperatures. Uh, you probably wouldn't need a wetsuit. Most people, if they wear one, they wear a, a shorty, and that's usually plenty. It's probably more than enough. You could probably dive in. Uh, your underwear and a t-shirt down here it's so warm uh, you just you know yeah you just be in your underwear and t-shirt then so anyway so coming past this coral head uh, we got one diver up ahead of us here we're kind of getting away from the coral you got to reposition as you drift here because uh, the coral will be a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right for the most part though we're not doing a lot of kicking to cover ground we're just letting the current carry us past all this stuff we're just kicking left and right to, to get closer to things to look at it as we kind of drift past it here. Uh, we do want to follow the uh, local dive leader here. That's usually a good idea. A lot of people don't want to be right up on the local guide. They want to be back in the bag, feel like they can do their own thing, and that's fine. Uh, but especially if you're newer, there's a bunch of tangs there hovering over this uh, little coral head here. Uh, part of the reason you want to hang out with the local guide is, you know, they do this every day. If they see something that they're pointing out, it's something cool, okay? Or they wouldn't be pointing it out. Uh, so it's good to be near the guide. They're going to be looking for things like uh, nurse sharks and eels and things like that and pointing them out to you. If you're way back at the back of the line, they're going to point those things out to the first person or two. Uh, and then as those people move on, the guide's going to move on. The people at the back of the line... They're, they're probably not even going to know uh, that anything got pointed out. So it's, it's a good idea to be the first person or first, second, or third person right behind that guide there. Kind of watch what the guide's doing during the entire dive. He'll help you find some stuff. So all these, these fish are all black Durgons. They're like a type of trigger fish. Uh, but they're just kind of coal black. There's a bunch of them there. I'm not sure why there's so many just hanging out on this one reef. You, know, you kind of see them everywhere. Uh, but there's just a really good pile of them. Uh, on this coral head in particular. A few other fish mixed in there. Uh, there's sergeant majors I see, some brown chromis. Another sergeant major there with the stripes. Uh, again, lots of little fish, little damsels and stuff like that. But these bigger, kind of medium sized, these black dergons, you kind of see them here in the distance here in a minute. I don't know if it's a spawning aggregation. A lot of times if they're in, a, in, in large numbers like this, it, it a lot of times it indicates they're, they're spawning or something like that. You kind of see them off, uh, off to the side there. There's quite a few of them kind of hanging out. There's a little Bermuda chub in the foreground there. Uh, moray. I see a big green moray. Huge moray eel coming straight at us. He's leaving the reef. This is so rare to see in the daytime. These guys are nocturnal. Normally, if you, you're lucky to see their head sticking out of the reef. This guy completely left the reef and, and went to another coral head, which I'm kind of kind of frustrated with myself. I didn't get in there closer and get some better video. Uh, immediately, the first thing that I tried to do was get everybody else's attention and notify them and point it out to them so they could see it come and get some pictures or video or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, he kind of swam in his crevice. <clears throat> he kind of disappeared. Everybody else just gets to see kind of like one little piece of his body wedged in this hole. You can't see it, the actual eel anymore. You can just see this green thing in there and tell that, hey, I think that's an eel. Um, so nobody else really got to see it, and I missed the opportunity because I was trying to get everybody else over there. So at this point, I, I kind of, I've bailed on it. I think I've seen it as good as I'm going to see it. I'm pointing it to everybody else. They're trying to get down there and get some pictures and stuff of it. But uh, again, I think they... Uh, so there's a hole down there, and you could just see like a, a side of, a little bit of the uh, eel. You just see like a green piece sticking out between the rocks down there. You can't even tell what it is. So anyway, that was pretty cool to see. Coming back down toward bottom here, a couple fish on bottom. Uh, there's a parrot fish, that small one that just zipped by. This bigger one here it looks like some kind of porgy. It's kind of crazy. I don't know if he's sleeping or what. I'm surprised I was able to actually touch his tail like that. 
Uh, it almost looks like a snapper, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that's not a snapper. That looks like some type of large uh, porgy. All right, check my air. Again, this is a shallow dive, so our air is going to last a really, really, really long time on this dive. So just kind of continuing the drift here, uh, skipping through this till we get to the next coral head. Trying to get neutral, keep everything uh, in line here. You see a bunch of uh, black dirt on there in the distance. There's quite a few on this dive. I'm not sure. There's got to be some spawning activity going on. There's just too many of them together. So anyway, uh, letting her drift out ahead of me again. I'm just doing some selfie stuff here. I can take still frames out of my video. Get pictures of her with a reef behind her. Again, a lot of black Durgons in the background there. It's kind of drifting along. Uh, this was a while back. Um, at this point, my daughter is a, a dive master as of today. Uh, back when this video was taken, she was she, she wasn't brand new, but uh, she was still a, little, a lot newer than she is today. A uh, little little less experienced. Uh, you'll see her hands swimming a little bit. That's pretty indicative of kind of newish divers tend to use their hands a little bit more than more experienced divers. But uh, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, coming up on another uh, coral head here. Again, you see all those black dergons in the background. There's a schoolmaster snapper under this ledge. You can kind of barely see him moving around up under there. I'm trying to move up, get a little closer on him here. Um, and he is going to kind of swim off. I'm not going to get a very good close-up of him before he kind of swims off to do his thing. So looking up underneath there, you see some barrel sponges. Very common down in Cozumel. Uh, a little blue tang there. Those guys are all over the place. Probably one of the more common fish down there. Again, this reef is a little bit different than even some of the other shallow reefs. A lot of a lot of open sand in between, and then just large coral heads, and then nothing but sand, and then a large coral head. Um, pretty unique but all those fish tend to just really pile up everywhere there's some exposed rock uh, the coral will grow on the rock obviously it, it, it's not going to just grow in the sand uh, it needs some kind of hard substrate to attach to there's a queen angel we didn't see one of those yet on this uh, on this trip I think it's the only one we saw on this trip but anyway so drifting through here some sponge there. You see the little openings. If they had a lot of blennies and stuff down there, which they really don't, you see little blennies poking their heads out of those sponge holes and stuff like that. A lot of little stuff there. I think that was some blue chromis. Uh, some probably some other chromis and damsels. So coming up on another good mound here, you see a bunch of exposed rock. That's what all that that coral really wants to attach to something. So anywhere you got the the uh, rock, that's where you're gonna have all your coral. See the boat up above there, kind of drifting along uh, along with us, waiting for us to surface. A couple of yellow goatfish on bottom here. So again, anywhere you see rock, you want to start getting prepared to start seeing fish. You, already, you can see all these little fish in here. Uh, and any bigger fish that are going to be hanging around, they're probably going to be hanging around this stuff too. They're generally not just swimming around out in the open water. There's going to be a bunch of damsels, wrasses, chromis, you know, stuff like that. All, all these little dots you see swimming around down in the coral are pretty much a combination of wrasse, damsels, and chromis. For the most part, anyway. So pretty good uh, kind of overhang here. Just kind of taking all this... This coral head in. It's pretty large. You see the boat up there again. A little bit of ways down. Pretty good little crevice and, and overhang here. Pretty unique uh, feature. A lot of blue chromis right here up close. Sergeant Major there with the stripes. Come and take a look. Um, I really like the coral that's like this. It's got a big overhang and you can almost just swim underneath it. You know, It gives an opportunity for a lot of those bigger fish and stuff like that to get up under there and that's when you're going to find your uh, nurse sharks and things like that. Alright, so we're about halfway into this dive now. 
again we're just kind of following along doing a little quick air check here checking her air see where we're at see a lot of small fish over the top of the uh, reef there like I said one of my other videos um, there's everything seems kind of dull colored it's kind of toned down it's all kind of like uh, shades of bluish there's not really a lot of reds or oranges or anything like that now there are you just can't see them uh, once you hit about 30 feet you start losing red and orange uh, we're right about that depth where we're, we're just starting to kind of lose some color so things seem a little bit kind of toned down and, and modeled in color kind of just shades of blue uh, if I'd have brought a light with me underwater, it would have really helped uh, restore some of that. But okay, so the guide's over here. He's looking at something, pointing at something. Usually, there's there's something. If he's pointing at something, it's usually something interesting. So coming over to take a look at what it is. Something really small and yellow. I can't tell in the video what it was. Might have been a, a juvenile um, butterfly fish or something like that. I, I'm not sure. Some type of small juvenile fish. He was kind of pointing out there. So that other guy's kind of going in, going in close. We're just going to kind of leave that behind. This looks like a bar jack. Uh, there's a few jacks uh, we're going to see coming up here, kind of, but they're singles. They're not schooled up. Uh, that one makes me think that was a bar jack because there's a line going down his back, which followed through his back and down into the lower lobe of the tail. That's usually what the uh, gives the bar jacks away. Uh, they're usually in larger schools, though. So anyway, you see the boat. You see people. Uh, I'm not sure if that's another group starting to descend or some of our group going up. I think that may be some of our group going up to the boat and, and kind of ending their dive. Again, we're halfway into this already. We're probably a little more than halfway into our, our air supply. Um, the quick breathers have to go up first. Uh, people that, that breathe a little slower and their air lasts a little longer. Or just smaller bodied people where an 80 cubic foot tank lasts longer just because their lungs are smaller. They're physically using less air per breath. Uh, they tend to get a bit longer dive out of it. Uh, that is one of the things, uh, once, once you start gaining dive experience, is you start getting more comfortable underwater. Your air supply will start to last a lot longer because you start focusing a lot more on your air and on your breathing rate. You'll be hyper aware of every single breath you take. And you know, you, you can't hold your breath diving, uh, but it doesn't hurt to just slow it down a little bit and go into a nice kind of slow rhythmic you know almost like a zen state of breathing uh, I can't you know it's part of the reason I like to be underwater is immediately I kind of go into this breathing pattern it just kind of calms me I don't I don't think about any of the troubles in, in life this that and the other it's it's just very therapeutic so anyway I'm pointing at stuff left and right here I'm not really sure what I'm pointing at uh, I see a fish up there under that ledge. Not sure what it is. Uh, maybe some kind of a kind of a small to medium sized snapper. Again, more barrel sponge here. Lots of other corals I can't identify. Nice barrel sponges everywhere. Um, now these bigger ones right there in front of me. That one there. I'm not. I don't think that's actually a barrel sponge. It's shaped more like a vase, but it's. I looked up vase sponge. It's not a vase sponge. It's different. But, uh, those are pretty beautiful too. They instead of just kind of closing up a little bit on the top and having an opening, they just flare open at the top like a vase would. Those are pretty common down there in Cozy Mill. So again, just kind of drift along. The current's taking us along here. So I'm getting her attention. We're kind of getting ahead of the group. I think some of the group went up to the boat. Everybody's kind of lagging way behind us. We're, I realize we're kind of out, way out ahead of the group. So I decide to stop. We're going to kind of wait for everybody to catch up and, and figure out what's going on. Uh, so I grabbed her, got her attention, and I kind of shoved my hand into the sand. She's doing the same thing. Again, the current is really ripping on us. The, the point for shoving our hand in the sand is to kind of hold our position, keep the current from pulling us. So we're not sitting there kicking our butts off trying to stay in place. There's a tri small tricolored damsel. Damselfish there. See the current blasting the sand. See me throw some here in a minute. You see the current really just take that sand away. That's a pretty heavy sand. Just blast it by like you're in the wind. I 
again I'm, we're just kind of waiting for the other divers to catch up just sitting here with my hands stuck in the sand kind of waiting waiting for other people to show up and, and kind of group back up here so we're gonna we're sitting here kind of getting blasted by the current we're gonna move up a little bit and move a little bit to the left in between these coral heads uh, the purpose for that is allow that coral head to block some of that current so I'm not sitting here struggling with my hand in the sand trying not to get get blown away so it's a little uh, little milder current in between these coral heads like this so everybody's kind of caught up at this point and I said okay let's go ahead and uh, recontinue the drift now so we're just gonna go ahead and start heading back down current back down current again again it looks like a bar jack swam by there a couple, couple divers up above problem with re-editing and re-editing these videos years later is that half the stuff that I'm pointing at and that I see <laughs> I, it's been too long I don't remember what half of this stuff is I'm pointing at I see something there I, I don't know what the heck I'm pointing at I don't know what it is a uh, GoPro is not a very good uh, macro camera I have a macro lens for it it, it does it's it's not super great um, but it's, it's real good for wide shots like this uh, but that's really about it when you're trying to get close-ups of critters the GoPro is not not the best camera to use for that so moving on from there checking air again uh, we're getting down into the the last uh, last bit of our air supply here so we're checking air a little bit more often another black Durgon see him swimming there real tr very trigger fish uh, shape Kind of a tall uh, barrel up on top of that barrel sponge on top of that coral head there to the right again I'm spending a lot of time looking underneath these ledges uh, up there to the left that was some kind of porgy or a small snapper I think it was some type of porgy again I'm just looking under ledges and things like that because that's usually where you're gonna find uh, a lot of your uh, critters hiding I'm looking in the sand, wrasses and things like that. Sometimes we'll live in the sand and have a little head poking out. Things like gobies and stuff like that. Um, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time just scouring open sand when there's a lot more uh, fish in the denser area packed you know, into the reef. I think that was a parrot fish that swam off there I just pointed at. The guide, he's over here. You see he's got a line running up from where his body's at. He's holding on. There's a file fish I'm pointing at. File fish are pretty common down there. There's a rock beauty on the bottom left, that little yellow and black one. A couple of tangs. So anyway, back to the instructor. When you see the instructor, you see this line going up from him. Uh, that's his surface marker buoy. Uh, he sent that up earlier when everybody was kind of bunching up and we stuck our hands in the sand He sent that up To uh, let the boat know hey, we got people coming up And he's gonna just continue to leave it up there until the di till every divers up and the whole dive is done So here he's pointing something out again something small. I'm not sure what he's pointing out again It's been too long something really little that the camera won't quite pick up. So he's showing me I'm trying to show my daughter she takes a quick look and then we're just kind of off again. You can't really bunch up too much here. The uh, current just making you keep running into each other left and right. So again, quick air check. Going to cross some open sand. Every time I think this dive is like over, I look around and I go, man, there's nothing ahead of us but more sand. You know, this dive must be over. We're probably going to go up in a second. There's going to be writing my name in the sand. Um, so at this point, I think ah, it's, it's, it's pretty much over. You know, I'm about ready to go up uh, we're not the last divers though so and we still have a little bit of air left so we haven't gone up yet uh, but I, I'm looking around thinking there's not a whole lot left to see around here but we are kind of coming up to a little bit of a formation here just not a lot of rock on it So coming up on this, uh, again, there's a little bit of a ledge there. There's some room for some critters to get up underneath there or inside of it. Kind of 
panning around looking for something. Uh, there's a parrot fisher I just pointed at that went down. That one on the bottom, moving left to right, I'm not sure what that guy was. Parrot fish are super duper common down there. There's a couple different kinds. Uh, there's a French angel off in the distance, that bigger one coming toward us, moving right to left. It's a French angel. Not sure why I didn't go up and get a close up. Again, I think the uh, reason is I, I've kind of half bailed on this dive at this point. I'm just considering a dive over. I don't see any more reef ahead of us. We just kind of defeat this attitude. I really shouldn't have that attitude. There's still plenty of stuff on these little... E e as little as there is here, there's still critters and stuff on it to see. So uh, There's another uh, blue tang or you know type of surgeon fish. Again, those are super duper common down there. Those things are absolutely everywhere. There's the guy. A couple more tangs. They're being a little predatorial. Not not not, not predatorial. Excuse me. Territorial. Uh, that one tang came up to that reef head, that little coral head, and that other one just kind of ran them off. Like, hey, this is my neighborhood. Um, you know, a lot of these fish on these reefs will be very territorial and kind of claim an area. So kind of getting into the last bit of video here. There's some, uh, I think those are porgies or grunts. I think there's some type of porgies. Uh, they're not snapper. Very very similar snapper uh, profile. Uh, but th those were definitely not snapper. There's some, there's some mutton snapper down there. Uh, those are not muttons. They'd have a darker back on them if they were muttons. Another small ledge here. So right as I think we, uh, we're getting out, there's nothing left to see. Boats overhead. Another little coral head here with some rock exposed. Again, there's some more uh, tangs and things of that nature. A lot, a lot more of the same stuff. The formations are just super duper cool to see, though, especially when they got a real narrow base and they're real big on the top and there's a lot of stuff up underneath them. I think that's another porgy there. Again, kind of skipping ahead some of the uh, slower, slower stuff here. So we're right back into some good rock and uh, coral again. Again, I thought the dive was just about over, or I thought we were out of all the coral and we were just into the sand. And here we are, right back into the reef again. So, don't give up. Don't think, uh, oh, I don't see any reef ahead of me. Uh, dive must be over, and just head up to the boat early. You'll kind of miss out on some opportunities like this here. So there's some damsels. Uh, the fish there I'm pointing at, I, I can't quite tell what that is, but I saw some other damsels and stuff like that here. Uh, this plant right here. I'm trying to figure out what this plant is. I'm not sure. There's a fish there. Again, it's too dark. I can't quite tell what kind of fish that was in the video here. This stuff's much easier to see and much easier to identify. When you're there firsthand, you're looking at it with your eyeballs. You know, this video... As good as this video looks, the video absolutely does not do justice to actually being there. It, it is just ten times better actually uh, seeing everything once you're there. Camera doesn't pick up a lot of the little stuff. So you're going to point underneath the ledge here. There's a pretty good overhang. There's a big barracuda sitting under this ledge. Uh, you'll see him here in a second. I'll get a little bit closer. I'm doing like the chomper with my hands there. That's just to indicate, you know, the teeth. This, that's how I say barracuda. Because they have those big teeth. When they mouth breathe, they're moving that mouth open. And it looks like they got all those teeth sticking out. They look kind of scary. Uh, but you see the barracuda kind of just hanging out under the ledge there, waiting for something to, to come by and uh, not be paying attention. Again, big coral head. Big gaps underneath. You know, anywhere there's rock, there's stuff growing on it. Again, I'm looking underneath for, for anything uh, might be hiding or, or living up underneath that coral head there. Don't see anything on this one. You can almost swim under that darn thing.
All right, we're getting into the last like a uh, couple minutes of the dive here. We're kind of finishing this up. Uh, I think a lot of the other divers in the group have already gone up to the boat. We're just like the last holdouts that are really good on our air supply here. And uh, still just kind of pushing along. The uh, rest of the group sitting up in the boat right now. So just trying to get, uh, again, a little bit of last, last bit footage here. Trying to get a little bit of close up of some of the coral and whatnot. Again, I can't really identify any of this coral. I'm, I'm not good at identifying the different types of coral. Uh, some of that plant looking material looks like a little bush growing. That's actually not a coral. It's some other type of plant. I'm not sure what it's called, but again, there's so much stuff growing down here and living down here that it's kind of, unless you're living down there, it's kind of hard to, to identify a lot of this stuff. If it's local that I have here in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I also see it down there, uh, I can identify it pretty easy, but uh, that's not usually the case. A lot of this stuff is is either it, is just down there and not up here. There's a lot of barrel sponges there. There's a lot of growth on everything. And you could do uh, snorkel dives from the shore at like 20 feet deep, just off the shore. Literally just swim off the shoreline with snorkel gear. You do dives about 20 feet and see stuff just like this. You know, you'll see tangs. You'll see spotted mores. You know, I saw spotted mores when I was there in like waist deep water at the shoreline it, it's just crazy you don't really have to go out in the boat it's just a lot more dense a lot more life it's just going to be a lot better if you do go out on one of these reefs so you see the guide here again he's got his line up with the reel with the buoy on the top the boat's just up there drifting next to the buoy uh we're getting to the point now where <laughs> again we're fighting the current so we're, we're having trouble grabbing hold of the line here but we're going to head up now our air is getting low enough Trying to move her around. I'm trying to get position correctly. Coming up. So I'm just holding on to her and I'm holding on to the line. There's too much current for us to both hold the line at the same time. So I'm kind of holding on to that. She's kind of holding on to me. Now I can't hold on to that line and pull on it. You can see here in a second, we're getting further and further away. We're pulling that line down horizontal. Instead of it going straight up, we're going to keep pulling and pulling and pulling on it. I don't want to keep doing that. So normally you're just using that line as a guide and not to actually physically hold on to. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the end of the dive. That was a pretty long one. It was about 45, 50 minutes, the actual dive itself. Uh, so here we've come up. We've made our ascent. We're doing our safety stop. I'm just going to kind of blaze through this. It's a long three minutes. And then uh, we surface at the end of it. Uh, but again, uh, that was Tormentos Reef in Cozumel, one of the shallower dives real close to shore. Uh, that one's pretty cool. It, it's a little bit less coral coverage, uh, but again, you just never know what you're going to see. We saw the big green moray. Uh, you might see nurse sharks, things like that. You just never know, but all these reefs are pretty cool. Uh, but this one is pretty nice. I like the shallow ones because you can do extremely long dives on them. But anyway, thanks for watching the video and hope to see you on the next one.